Guatemala is a country not larger than 109,000 square kilometers. But squeezed in between two large continents and laying on three continental plates, this amazing country is absolutely ideal for studies of different ecosystems. With vegetation types from dry highland mountains to wet lowland rainforests, Guatemala is home for more than 6,000 different plant species. To comparison, there's not even 3,000 plant species in all the Nordic countries together. An immense amount of endangered orchids and the jaguar is just a small appetizer of Guatemala's flora and fauna. Mangrove forests and mangrove swamps are plant communities considered as coastal ecosystems. These ecosystems are situated in so-called keys, spread throughout the world, but only in tropical and subtropical waters. Mangroves are very salt tolerant, and twice a day the territory is occupied by the salty water from the sea. The habitat stretches from Australia and Asia to Africa and further on to the Americas. Here in the torrid zone, the water's average temperature is not less than 23 degrees Celsius, which is a very important factor for this particular plant community. We are going to look a bit closer at three mangle communities in Guatemala. And first place is situated at the Pacific coast, a place called Biotopo Monterico. Now we are in the mangroves of uh, Guatemala, the south coast. What we can see here is uh, four different uh, species of mangroves, most common species in the uh, new tropic world. What is very characteristic, as we can see out here, is uh, the roots, it's above uh, the water. Mangroves are halophytes. This means that they are relatively insensitive to salt toxicity. This is also why mangroves grow where fresh water and the tidal meet. It is assumed that mangroves are excluded from other plant communities by competitors that do not carry the salt burden in this stressed environment. The mangle community exists in zones. It is often monospecific as shown on the illustration. The zonation is modified by local topography, which decides the tidal runoff. Also, the sediment composition is of importance when we talk about zonation. Furthermore, vegetative patterns will change with substrate composition. The typical substrate is a shallow sand flat that has collected sediment and turned into a muddy organic soil. The very typical mangrove adaptation to heavy The water hyacinth is an invasive species from the Amazon basin of South America. Here we have one of the biggest problems in the, in the tropics, in the tropical waters. Actually it looks uh, very nice, but uh, it's not. It was introduced in many countries because of its beauty. But if it's not controlled, it will cover lakes and ponds entirely. This impacts water flow, blocks sunlight and starves the water from oxygen causing native aquatic plant death and fish kills. There are four species, Prisophora, uh, Avicennia, Tonocarpus and Lagungularia. We were told that the four common mangrove species would be at this location. We only had the pleasure to see the red and the white mangrove, but let's find out more about these four species. And also the, 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 we see they're clearly different. Approximately 35 species of mangroves occur globally. In the neotropical world, the following four species are the most common ones. The white mangrove, Lagungularia racemosa, usually occupies higher elevations and has no visible area root systems. The easiest way to identify the white mangrove is by the leaves. They are elliptical, light yellow-green, often notched at the tip and have two distinguishing sugar glands on the leaf stalk at the base of the leaf blade. 
the black mangrove, Avicenna germinans, often occurs in shallow water and landward of the red mangrove. The black mangrove can be identified by numerous finger-like projections called pneumatophores that protrude from the soil around the tree's trunk and help with aeration. The smaller species is the buttonwood, Colocarpus erecta. The name refers to the button-like flowers that are clustered in 5mm terminal globose heads. It also has glands on the leaf stalks like the white mangrove and it may grow into tidally but is usually considered an upland species. The red mangrove, Rhizophava mangle, is found closest to the water and is probably the best known. The red mangrove is easily identified by its tangled arching roots called prop roots. The growth of these roots earned red mangroves the title walking trees because they creep into new areas by branching roots. We now entered the, 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 the river Rivudusen and we are going to sail for about four hours. We are going to look for mangroves. Here at the riverhead we have fresh water. We also have mangroves, but actually many mangrove species grow very well in fresh water. Mangrove is not a taxonomical term. It is based on physiological and biological characteristics such as nematophores and viviparae. Some species have lack of these features and are more considered as mangrove associates than true mangroves. Here we see the fruits of the of the Rhizophora. And uh, what we actually see here is that uh, the seed has germinated. This is called the uh, Viviparae. Red mangrove trees has occupied all tropical seas around the world with these characteristic seedlings. But even though the progress to a living plant still attached to the parent tree, it may float in brackish water up to one year before it stake its claim for territory. As it grow up, it will get its characteristic aerial stilt roots, which turn into a useful diagnostic field character. Here we actually see some of the roots of the red mangrove coming down from the trees. Metaphorically speaking, these arching roots make the mangrove walk in loops the same way the dolphin jumps in the water. I'm standing on the, uh, on the roots of a red mangrove called Rhizoma. And here we got an uh, epiphyte of the cactaceae. And there's some giant ants walking around up here. Here we have another epiphyte. This is an Androlepis from the Bromeliaceae. This is the Bacura aquatica from the Bombacacia. It is a tropical wetland tree native to Central and South America where it grows in swamps. Commercially it is sold under the name Malabar chestnut Amani tree. Here we have the fertile leaves of the Agrosticum. What are you filming yep. above ground? Seashells attached to the roots do not hurt the mangrove. Actually, it protects them from harsh treatment. The root of the red mangrove. This might look like algae, but this is seagrasses, which are flowering plants. They populate clear shallow waters close to the mangroves where they are spread by rhizomes. The food web of mangle and sea grasses are interlinked with each other and also the coral reef. The water here hides another secret. The sea cow is Guatemala's largest mammal. It is endangered and it cannot survive temperatures below 15 degrees Celsius while it is inhabit in this warm, shallow river. This protected area is called Biotopo Chucon Matiagas.
you to be shitted if you uh, not under that. Rio Dos certainly had a lot of interesting offers. They went away way too fast. But we had to go to the hotel before it got dark. That's a professor. Yeah. Look at the flowers. They're all closed because the sun already... There's no sun. Let's smooch. Let's go search for the mangroves. This is a parasite plant. It could be a big one, right? We are now at the Punta Mana Peak. And uh, what we are going to do now is that we are going to look for species of mangroves, uh, not only, but also other species that were, live in this plantal community ecosystem here at the coast. Also at this location we were told that it would be able to find all of the four common mangrove species. To our great fortune, we actually got more log it this time. Oh! What was that? Sorry, I interrupted that. Yeah. What do I know? Yeah. And here, oh, what's that big? Look at the leaves right. of this tree. Which are they? Oh, this, that one. The big, the thick. Man. <laughs> yeah. But it is different, you see? Yeah, Here we have found the Conocarpus, but it's quite dead, so we're trying to find a better one. Buttonwood is usually an upland species, but here at Punta de Manapig we found it only 20 meters from the shoreline. This is remarkable because buttonwood is the most sensitive to immersion in salt water. This could be a step of succession, constantly changing, but anyway, it shows that Same nature that often can be unpredictable. These are flowers in the, in the, campus, okay. the black mangrove only exists in the Americas. Of the four common species in the new tropical Emery. world, it is the most tolerant to salt water. The up to 30 cm pencil-like thermometers support the tree with oxygen in the moist ground. Now we have uh, made a little research of the root specimen that we got in the water. You can see that it's rather spongy. These roots are made so the tree can get some air and it will come in through you can see the small lenticels on the roots above the water. That's how the tree gets air. The white mangrove grow in the Americas and West Africa. It is typically restricted to the land area of the mangrove community. It can form pure stands in the more disturbed areas, but it is rarely seen. Sagittaria. Here we got the flower of Montecaria. Yes, yes, oh yes. Where, where's the best place? On your other side? where there's a biological station. We'll have them between the leaves because they're opposite. But Malmaise is very easy to recognize. fruit of the uh, stimulania of the uh, apicinaceae. No 
Normally this species grows at 2000 meters of altitude. It comes down with the rivers from the mountains and deposits seeds at sea level. It is not a mangrove in the strict sense, but it lives in this mango community. We are now 100 meters away from where we were before. And it is a still coastal swamp, but we haven't seen any mangrove vegetation. Is this still mangrove vegetation? Or is it just another ecosystem near the sea? This question is hard to answer. If we assume that Mangle is a community in tropical and subtropical swamps on the influence of ebb and flood, this could possibly be a Mangle subtype without any true mango species. If we assume that Mangle has to be dominated by at least one of the four common species, this would most likely be categorized as another coastal ecosystem. It might be closely related to the mangrove community, though it has features as salinity in common with the mango. Therefore, it might be of same great importance as a typical mango. A community that provides habitat for many kinds of animals. Home for thousands of insects, shelter for fish and nesting sites for birds. Furthermore, many people make a livelihood from mango. But there is a great difference in industrial benefit complexes and local people's small-scale shrimp fishing and wood collecting. Mango is not only a natural resource, it is also a diverse natural treasure. Hey! <laughs> we came up with...